In this video, I'm going to teach you about mutations. Many students have misconceptions about mutations. Please listen and watch very carefully and pay close attention to the descriptions and explanations of what mutations really are. If you have preconceived notions about mutations that turn out to be wrong, forget them. First, what is a mutation? A mutation is a structural change to a gene. I'll repeat that. A mutation is a change to a gene. What do I mean by that? We'll dive deeper into that into the next slide. But for now, I want you to recall some important pieces of information that you've learned that will help you understand this stuff moving forward. Remember that a gene is a small section of DNA. DNA is your body's genetic code, the instruction manual for how your body is built and how it functions or how it works. Specifically, genes provide the instructions or recipe for building proteins in the body. Remember that a protein is a large worker molecule or group of atoms that does many different jobs in the body. For example, many proteins are antibodies that fight infections. Others are messengers that send signals throughout the body to make body processes happen. Others are builders that provide structure and support for our cells. And they can also repair damaged cells and cell parts. We've also learned that the proteins in your body affect your traits, such as the color of your hair, skin, and eyes, how tall you are, and what your face looks like. I taught all of this information in another video, so if the above information doesn't make complete sense to you, go back and watch the video about DNA, chromosomes, genes, proteins, and traits so you have a better understanding of these terms. Now, open your ears and pay close attention. It is very, very important that you understand that mutations are not direct changes to traits. Again, mutations are not changes to traits. Mutations are changes to genes, so therefore they are changes to DNA. Please, please, please make sure you do not hold on to any incorrect information here. Now, I do want to mention that sometimes a mutation, which is a change to a gene, might cause a trait to change because the change in the gene may cause a protein to be made differently, which could then change a trait. But most of the time, it does not. Regardless, even if that does happen, the change in trait is not called a mutation. The mutation is the change to the gene. We're going to go into how that might be possible in the upcoming slides, so hang tight. So again, a mutation is a structural change to a gene. A gene is a section of DNA that has the instructions for making a protein. We've learned that strands of DNA look like a twisted ladder. The rungs or steps of the ladder are made of nucleotide bases. They are combinations of adenine, thymine, cytosine, and guanine. You do not have to remember those right now, but they are helpful for understanding how a mutation works because if the order of those nucleotide bases changes, that is called a mutation. A mutation occurs if a base is added, deleted, or swapped for a different one. For example, here are two DNA sequences. The top is the original or what was started with. You can see the series of A's, T's, C's, and G's, which represent each different nucleotide base. For some reason, one of the thymines, a T, has changed to a cytosine, a C. That is a mutation. You're not going to get tested on this, but to help you better understand what a mutation is, let's briefly go over three main types of mutations. One, is a substitution. This is where one base is replaced with a different one. A substitute is used in its place. 
Another is an insertion, where extra base pairs are inserted into the DNA. Another type is a deletion, where a section of DNA is lost or deleted. All of these are mutations because a section of DNA is being changed somehow, so it isn't the same as it was before. You might be wondering what could cause these changes in DNA to happen? What causes mutations? Most are random and there's no clear or obvious cause. Most mutations occur as a random error when the DNA copies itself inside of a cell before that cell divides. However, there are some things around us that can cause an increase in the likelihood that mutations will occur, such as high levels of radiation. For example, high doses of X-ray radiation could cause mutations or lots of ultraviolet or UV radiation from the sun, which can cause mutations in skin cells and lead to skin cancer. That's why it's so important to protect yourself by wearing hats and clothing and reapplying sunscreen regularly when you're out in the sun. Another thing that can increase the rate of mutations occurring is mutagenic chemicals, or chemicals that increase the rate of mutations. An example of this is tobacco smoke, which contains carcinogens, or chemicals that can cause cancer. Smoking is a major risk factor for various cancers, including lung, mouth, and throat cancers. Another thing that can increase the rate at which mutations can occur is very high temperatures. This is because high temperatures cause chemical reactions to happen faster, increasing the odds of DNA damage and disrupting the stability of DNA molecules. So you may be wondering, when a mutation occurs in a living thing, what happens next? Are there big consequences? Does it cause that living thing to die or get sick or experience a drastic change? There are a few possibilities, but it's important to note that it all depends on whether or not the mutation drastically changes the code for making a protein. If the change to the gene changes the instructions for building a protein, and that protein ends up different enough from what it should have been before, that could lead to some sort of change in traits for the organism. So, what happens after a mutation? Well, you may be surprised to hear that most of the time, nothing happens. That's right, most of the time, a mutation won't have any effect at all. But how can that be? There are a few reasons why, so we'll go over the possibilities. One possibility is that the change in the DNA sequence still ends up coding for the same amino acids. Amino acids are what link together to make a protein. So if the amino acids linked together are still the same as what they should be, this results in the same protein. And everything is fine. Nothing is different. Another reason why nothing might happen is that an amino acid does end up changing, but that change has little or no effect on the protein's function or ability to do its job. Not all amino acid substitutions lead to big changes in the structure or function of a protein. Sometimes the substituted amino acid has similar properties as the original, so the protein functions normally. But some mutations do actually cause some sort of effect. Sometimes it is harmful to the organism. This is because the change in the DNA sequence could be significant enough to cause changes to the sequence of amino acids that build the protein, and that protein will have a changed structure. If its structure, or the way it's built and shaped, is different, and then what it's capable of doing changes. It will not be able to do its job properly, so the living thing suffers a negative effect. And in some rare cases, a mutation might even be helpful. Some changed proteins as a result of mutations might 
actually positively affect an organism's traits, giving it an advantage. It's certainly more rare, but it has happened. Some examples of this are many humans being able to digest lactose, the sugar in milk, throughout their entire lives into adulthood, so they are able to have dairy products without getting sick. Humans are naturally supposed to be lactose intolerant, but at one point in time, there was a mutation to change that, and it has become more common in populations where it's common to eat and drink a lot of dairy products. That mutation has been passed on to their offspring. Some mutations can lead to an increased resistance to certain diseases, so an organism wouldn't get sick or as sick from a disease. Some animals might develop a trait that makes it easier to live in their environment, such as their bodies being a different color that blends in better so they can avoid predators. As stated in the previous slide, some mutations in DNA can be harmful to an organism. One example in humans is a mutation in the HBB gene, which can be passed down from parents to their children. The HBB gene contains the instructions for making part of a protein in red blood cells called hemoglobin. Some people have a specific spot in their HBB gene that has the wrong nucleotide. This can lead to a different amino acid being used in the making of the hemoglobin protein, changing the way that the hemoglobin works. This abnormal hemoglobin protein is also known as hemoglobin S or HBS. Hemoglobin S is a huge problem and can cause big problems for someone who has two copies of this mutated HBB gene, one from each parent, leading to something called sickle cell disease. In people with normal hemoglobin, the hemoglobin proteins are spread out throughout a red blood cell. But for someone with the abnormal hemoglobin S protein, the hemoglobin can clump together and form long strands. Normally, red blood cells are round discs. If the hemoglobin inside of a red blood cell sticks together and forms long strands, this can cause the red blood cell to become misshapen and take on a sickle shape. Normal red blood cells are round and very flexible, so they can easily squeeze through tight places like really small blood vessels. However, if someone has sickle cell shaped red blood cells, these cells are less flexible and can become trapped in small blood vessels, leading to blockages, pain, and reduced oxygen delivery to the tissues that need the oxygen. This prevents the circulatory system from working properly, carrying blood, oxygen, food, and other substances throughout the body where they need to go, and can cause a person with sickle cell disease to be very sick. This is all because there was a mutation in their gene that contains the instructions for making the protein hemoglobin. The hemoglobin is made incorrectly, and it clumps together in long strands causing the shape of many blood cells to be sickle-shaped. This causes the circulatory system to not work properly, leading to other issues with other body systems. 